Hello from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Oliver Freud and Reich here, or Dr. F, as my patients call me, for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this quick take, we will look at an article together regarding the efficacy and safety of using colony stimulating factors like filgrostim in a clozapine read challenge when you're dealing with somebody who developed agran, agranocytosis, on neutropenia. For those of you who are prescribing clozapine, here's the feared scenario. Let's imagine you just started somebody on clozapine, and after a few months, he's on a good dose and clinically improving. Then on a Friday afternoon, you get a call from the laboratory that his ANCs are 900. You repeat it, and now it's 800, so you stop clozapine and stabilize the patient more or less on clopromazine. Now, once you end up with a patient who develop a grand or severe neutropenia while on clozapine, you're a bit behind the eight ball clinically. Since discontinuation is usually not a good option, you're using this medicine already as a last resort, if you will, for treatment-resistant schizophrenia, usually. So I think we often read challenge at some point. We go very slowly in titrating clozapine back up and hope for the best. And now once you run into problems again, then you're in the territory that the paper addresses. You basically wonder, should you read challenge if you do it? If you should add a colony stimulating factor like GCSF this time to boost your patient's bone marrow production of neutrophils, this manuscript specifically addresses the question of whether you should use GCSF if you want to increase the chances of success for a clozapine B challenge or continuing when you have somebody with agran or with neutropenia on clozapine. If you're listening to this quick tape, I suspect you're familiar with clozapine and the issue of dropping neutrophils. But let me emphasize three things about clozapine and agran before moving on to the paper itself. One, it can happen. It's rare, probably below 1%, but common enough if you prescribe this over years and if you work in a clozapine clinic, you will absolutely see it. Two, for it to be clearly related to clozapine, it must occur within the first 6 to 12 months. Now, this has to do with the presumed passive physiology, which is either a toxic or immune reaction or both. Now, never say never in medicine, but if somebody's ANC is decreasing after years on clozapine, I think it's unlikely for this to be clozapine or at least clozapine alone. There's a substantial differential diagnosis in dropping neutrophils like infections. And making the etiological connection between clozapine and agran or neutropenia is not always dry and cut. And three, I already alluded to this with my eight ball example, you cannot simply move on to a different antipsychotic if agran happens. So the question of re-challenge is very real. And so I'm thankful for this paper by my namesake, uh, Olivier Corbet and his colleagues. It really uh, asks the question, if you can have a more successful read challenge or ongoing treatment in the face of uh, these blood dysgrasias. The paper itself is basically a literature review of the cases and case series published with this question in mind. And those reviews of published cases are, of course, not great because they're unselected and not systematic. You never know what gets published and what does not get published, so the reporting bias is a real concern. In the end, the authors came up with 34 articles with the total. Now hold your horses, total of 59 cases. Not very impressive numbers, but it is what it is. There were three key findings. One, about between 70 or 80%, three quarters of cases were successfully re-challenged or continued on clozapine. Now consecutive case series, which may be a little bit less biased, had a lower success rate of 60%. Rule of thumb here is, well, you have at least a 50% chance of success based on this paper. Key finding two, there were no clinical predictors of success or failure like the severity of episode or time course of the episode of Agran. And third key finding was that Phil Grastim was the most widely used GCSF analog. Probably not a big difference between prophylactic use of Phil Grastim or as needed use. That means you could give it as a single dose once your ANC drops below a pre-specified threshold like 1,000 cells per microliter. It was also well tolerated with only minor complaints. And the most common dose, if you're interested, was uh, 300 micrograms per day. The authors in that discussion also mentioned lithium, which I used to use to manage BNN ethnic neutropenia before 
the uh, REMS as the registry created a special category that really uh, alleviated this problem of BEN patients. So this problem is really not a big problem anymore. Lithium is a poor man's GCSF as it mightily stimulates the bone marrow. It goes beyond just uh, the marginalization, which uh, I think mistakenly some people assume is the main mechanism of action. You know this to be true if you have someone in lithium and you monitor white blood cells. And typically, most patients on chronic long-term lithium treatment have a WBC about uh, 10,000 or so. It really mildly stimulates the bone marrow to put out more um, neutrophils. So other than the sample size, the main weakness of the paper is that the etiology of the lower ANC is unclear because they really mix agranulocytosis and neutropenia. Only about 60% of cases fell into the consensus time frame for clozapine-induced agranulocytosis. So early in the course of treatment, but definitely within the first year. And I think this just shows there is confusion between B9 ethane neutropenia, natural fluctuations, other causes of temporarily low neutrophils. In this report, also 50% of cases were given GCSF after the second episode, meaning that they actually had tried to recharge initially without GCSF. This is a very important clinical point. In general, the risk of agranocytosis after a firm diagnosis of clozapine-related agranocytosis is very high, probably about 80%. In one review of all clozapine rechallenges after major adverse events from 2018 by our colleague Peter Manu, the authors looked at uh, NMS, myocarditis, and also at agran and neutropenia. And only 18% were successfully rechallenged for agonocytosis compared to 63% after neutropenia, suggesting that those two entities are really very different clinical beasts. So here's my clinical bottom line. Given that the stakes from clozapine discontinuation are so high, it is worthwhile to think how to best support your subsequent treatment efforts with clozapine after an episode of agran or neutropenia. And this support may come in the form of maximum medical support with GCSF, particularly if there's uncertainty about the etiology of your low ANCs. I am skeptical that if you are dealing with a very toxic and a very fulminant immune reaction to clozapine within the first few months that GCSF can prevent this from happening again. If I decide, though, I'm not so clear, I want to give it a try, I want to maximize my chances of success, I would probably use GCSF and I would probably use it as needed and not necessarily prophylactically. And if I use this strategy, I have at least a 50% chance of being able to continue clozapine. Not such bad odds. So GCSF probably really helps if you just need to boost your bone marrow a little bit, but you're not dealing with this uh, catastrophic immune reaction, the destruction of neutrophils or neutrophil precursors in the bone marrow from some immune reaction triggered by clozapine. It is unclear how long you would need to provide GCSF support, but probably at least one year. And one last comment before I let you go. I would definitely work this out with hematology, at least in my setting, to make sure I'm not off base with my treatment plan and also for the initial workup and diagnosis. A re-challenge with clozapine is a high-risk medical intervention. You need buy-in from all stakeholders. That includes patients, but also family members and even group home staff who can help you implement and monitor and all need to know about the potential risks and really sign off.